Hey gang, with just days left before the midterms, we've got one of our favorite guests back with us to give us a sneak peek behind the scenes of one of the most exciting campaigns in the nation today. Fresh off his stints with Tucker and Hannity, the next governor of Pennsylvania is back with us, the one and only Doug Mastriano. Governor, it is so good to see you again. Thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. Thank you for your support. You're, you're one of the first ones out there, Steve. I appreciate that. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, absolutely. We knew, oh, we knew it. We knew that you were, you were destined for this for the, for the moment <laughs> we saw you. Uh, I haven't seen you since the movie premiere. Uh, the, wow. the, the movie that was canceled by the leftists that never saw it, uh, but they couldn't cancel it fully. It was an amazing night. Standing O's for you and your campaign. Wow. And gang, just so you know, we actually have as a gift, if you click on the bottom link, there's going to be two links down below, dougforgov.com, and then another link down below. You can actually watch that movie for a limited time for free uh, if you uh, wow. click on that link. So uh, we want you to see this amazing campaign. Give us a sense of how things are going, Doug. Um, the polls are tightening up. You've been getting some awesome coverage on Fox News with Hannity and Tucker, the rallies are rocking. Trump's out there giving you the big shout outs and support. How are things going? <laughs> yeah, on the ground. And that, that's obviously where I'm focused here. It, it's really going well. And uh, this is not, I, I, I'm a soldier. I, I don't speak in really platitudes or try to cover things up. Let me give you some examples on how it's going well, in my view. <clears throat> we did a, a, a meet and greet. You know, meet and greet is different than a rally. It's supposed to be, in, in my case, two, three hundred people. Time to talk with people, chit chat, get some pictures, and and then give a speech. Uh, rallies are completely different. Usually, no time for you know chit chat and, and or many pictures. So we did a meet and greet uh, outside of Pittsburgh in a Democrat stronghold, Steve, on a Thursday night, competing against the uh, a Pittsburgh team game. And uh, we had four or five hundred people come out in this Democrat stronghold. I mean, it was fantastic. It was it was really standing room only in a veterans hall. And uh, we we took time to greet those that waited in line to, to, to speak with us. About two or three hundred people waited in line. The line just bent all the way around the room. Um, and not in a Democrat area with, with many, many Democrats in a room and many independents, not, not a not a ne negative word uttered to Rebbe and I, you know, at, at all. It was incredible, you know, because occasionally you have somebody come up, you know, kind of a troll or somebody who yeah. is passionate and, and we disagree kind of thing. Not not one. Uh, we wheeled around the next day this past Friday and went up to Erie, another, another Democrat stronghold. And this is our third event, our third rally in Erie. We've done five things there. But our, it, it's kind of funny. It's gone up 100 every time. Our first time during the primary was 400 after the primary. 500, and then now this last weekend, 600 showed up in, in the wow. Democrat area. Our reception in the Southeast, where you know we're told by the experts out there, you know that uh, Southeast is going to be hard for me. Uh, we did an event in Philadelphia in the Latino neighborhood, and it was amazing. The energy, the people, the support was fantastic. The Latinos are breaking Republican in a big yeah. way, as you've reported yeah. on. I confirm that from the field. And then the, the next day, we went out and had two events. We had one in Chester County, right outside of Philly. Uh, it was supposed to be meet and greet. Steve, there's too many people that showed up. It turned into a rally. It's about over 500 showed up to a fire hall on a Saturday morning. That afternoon, we wheeled up to Bucks County, not too far. This is north of Philly now, not too far from Washington Crossing State Park. And over 1,000 showed up. Facts are stubborn things. <laughs> yep. Facts are stubborn things for sure. That is amazing. <laughs> What I, I hope everybody knows uh, about you, I, I think it's so important. And, and again, it's a testimony to your character and, and how you're, you're fighting the good fight here. You're basically fighting a two front war, uh, to, to use the apt military metaphor, right? You're not, you're not just fighting the Democrats, you're fighting establishment Republicans as well. The, uh, the Republican Governors Association isn't doing jack for you uh, to their shame. And our mutual friend, Rich Barris, uh, he's tweeted out, it's because they know you can win and they don't want you governor of Pennsylvania when Donald Trump runs for president in 2024. Am, am I assessing that correctly, at least from, from your vantage point? I, I would not disagree with that. And uh, it's kind of one of those cases, you know, where you're cutting off your nose because, you, you know, despite your face kind of thing. Right. So uh, let's think about the logic to that. Um, 
The road to the White House in 2024 goes straight through Pennsylvania, not through Oregon, not through Connecticut and, and other places or Colorado where the, you know, the RGA might be throwing and investing money. It goes through Pennsylvania. And uh, I don't get it. I, I think they're doing a great disservice, especially when money you know, is being raised from the energy sector by the RGA. And, you know, and the promise has been that uh, you'll be spent in Pennsylvania. And so I, I expect uh, that they would live up to that pledge because those donors then ought to give to my campaign you know, rather than you know, to this, this PAC. Uh, on the other side of it here, uh, they're putting our nation at stake. Steve, it's, so, it's such an alien concept to me. You, you just take for granted that you know, in the end, although people are motivated by self-interest, everyone is, that in the end, they'll look out for the greater good. Yeah, yes, yeah. they might not like you know, my style of candidacy. They might not like that I'm not a son, you know, a son of a billionaire or what have you, or that uh, you know, I, I'm not a career politician, that I wore the uniform most of my life. It, it, that's irrelevant. What's better for America is a victory in Pennsylvania at the gubernatorial level. I get to appoint the Secretary of State. I get to clean up elections and, and uh, you know, and restore voting integrity. The Democrats, hats off to them, Steve. They get it. They've poured $40 million now, the most ever in Pennsylvania history, in, into a gubernatorial candidate's campaign. Josh Shapiro has $40 million, has come into his, his coffers from an array of sources, many of which are dark sources as well, and, and you know, it, it, money he ought not to be taking. But um, he's, he, they see the importance of it, and we really need to wake up. And so people, if you go to DougForGov.com and volunteer to be a poll worker or donate money, we'd appreciate it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny. All that money in the world doesn't seem to be dealing with uh, violent crime. <laughs> the, <Yeah>. the massive <clears throat> epidemic of crime that's happening and particularly in Philadelphia, just one of the worst cities uh, in the nation. Can you remind all of us who's currently the chief law enforcement officer in Pennsylvania who's responsible for prosecuting these criminals? The irony is it's my opponent, little Josh Shapiro, and uh, he's <laughs> been our attorney general for six years. And uh, once again, let's go over his record. He's a failure. Uh, he, he should be uh, <laughs> unqualified for office or disqualified because of his record. Let's go through his record. Facts are stubborn things. Uh, on his watch for six years, crime has gone up now a total of 40%. So it's almost doubled while he's been our attorney general. But that's the senior law enforcement. His job to enforce the law right. and, and law and order. Uh, a thousand carjacking, Steve, 430 homicides. Last I checked on track for 600. I'll be a record. That's more than double than when he came in. It was 277 when Shapiro came in. We are the fourth highest in fentanyl deaths. We have an open air drug market in Kensington, downtown Philly, which my wife and I visited without fanfare, without cameras. We wanted to see the suffering and hear from the people. And it was very heartbreaking. Um, Instead of doing his job, Steve, and, and, and protecting people, we saw what happened in Wawa with, with the looters, 30 kids, you know, $10,000 damage. And while, now Wawa is closing down several stores in Philly. Uh, we saw the shooting after a football game. And what has Josh Shapiro done? Uh, if, I had a, if I was an artist, I'd have a picture of Nero looking like Shapiro, kind of fiddling, you know, it's Philly burned kind of thing. Uh, he's sued to keep your kids in mass. He sued to keep your business shut down. He, he went after the homes that were ordered by Levine to take the sick back, unleashing the plug and killing thousands. And then he even sued the little sisters of the poor for, over a religious issue. And so with all that in mind, th this guy, th he, it should not even be close. And, and Philadelphia, I want to speak to uh, the folks in Philadelphia. You've had a Democrat mayor in Philadelphia for 72 years, since 1950. You've had a Democrat city council since 1962, 58 years. Uh, it, you know, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Einstein, we, we love that quote. It's time for a change, Philadelphia. And if on day one, Mastriano is going to have a law and order state. We're going to protect your neighborhoods and kids. And so you got nothing to lose. It's time to leave the Democrat Party. Tulsi Gabbard got it right. She said, I can no longer be part of this elitist cabal you know, called the Democrat Party, and she left it. And on cue, my opponent, Josh Shapiro, elitist cabal, he announced that he was going to have a, a special gathering with these Hollywood elites from the West Wing. I call it Left Wing, from the series West Wing. And uh, he was inviting everyone to donate, you know, as part of this, this uh, elitist cabal that he was having a get-together with. And make it even worse, Steve, the irony, Josh Shapiro tweeted a couple days ago, we really need to do something about crime in Pennsylvania. Like, dude, where have you been for the past six years? Oh, the irony. <laughs> Only a politician would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Only a politician. Oh, my. Well, maybe, maybe the thing we do is we, we, uh, we sue more nuns 
I mean, who does that? <laughs> who sues not? Twice. Two times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, another area that's so fast that's, that has international implications right now is the energy sector. I mean, yes. Liz Truss, <clears throat> uh, British Prime Minister, wow. she just resigned today, right? Europe is going through a financial crisis that's antagonized by this energy crisis like never before. And we're vulnerable to this as well as we see with the pain in the pump and the increasing energy bills. You've made the revitalization of Pennsylvania's energy sector a centerpiece of your campaign. Can you talk about that? Yeah, thank you. It really is the centerpiece. That, that's exactly what it is. And so, you know, we have a lot of cultural battles going on, but the main battle right now, the 50 meter target, we say in the army is, is the economic crisis and people are choosing soon between heating and eating. And so right. we have to bring relief. And so on day one, I'm going to begin implementation of a Pennsylvania Energy Independence Act. And, and the first part of that operation, and this is completely the opposite of Josh Shapiro, he will not do any of this, is on day one, we're out of this carbon tax called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. We'll be out of that. The reason why our, our energy prices went up 40% on the 1st of June was because of our anticipated entry into Regi. Now, there's court challenges. It's kind of complicated, but it doesn't matter. On day one, we're out. Within a few weeks, you should see a drop in energy prices in Pennsylvania. That's just the beginning. Part two is I'm removing, I'm lifting about eight years of uh, Tom Wolf and Shapiro's regulations on our energy sector. And we're going to drill and dig like we've never done before. We're going to develop our, our natural gas. I call it freedom gas. We're going to become a net exporter, pipeline to Philadelphia, LNG terminal, liquefied natural gas, modernized terminal in Philadelphia, in, in, in the Bay and start shipping that to Germany and to Massachusetts and to Poland and Lithuania, where the Lithuanians have a ship they built just for this purpose to buy it off of Pennsylvania. And the ship is called the Independence. You can't make this yeah, stuff up. That's so cool. And then, of course, um, also another pipeline up to Erie. I'm thinking to expedite the process. Uh, I have to look at you know the right of way and, and, and land for, for the pipeline will take a long time. So maybe we just build it along the Pennsylvania Turnpike from the southwest straight across the Philly. Uh, some of the energy companies are already looking in the uh, outskirts of Philly of, of doing this, you know, fulfilling this dream. Um, we, th there's a report that came out last week, Steve, that says there's a potential of $100 billion in energy revenues waiting for us to, to take. Wow. Okay. I get it. You know, the western half of the state has the oil, the gas, and the coal. But all the state will benefit from it, especially right. when we become a net exporter. It's going to bring revenues right. into our coffers. We'll really get right. those. Our roads are terrible in Pennsylvania. Really fix those roads and uh, jobs, six figure jobs in the energy sector, support sector jobs, restaurants, hotels, you know, you name it. It's, it's going to be a, a renaissance in the economic situation in Pennsylvania. And I believe, Steve, since God has endowed us with a special blessing being the birthplace of our nation as the Keystone State, that we could in this endeavor over time, help break the, the country out of this ec economic collapse that we're about to enter. Wow, absolutely. And it's so like you're talking about the exporting, particularly across the Atlantic. I mean, Turkey now is just rubbing their hands saying, oh, you mean we could be the next uh, gas hub for Europe? Oh, yeah. I mean, that would be that would be Philadelphia. Philadelphia would yes. be a gas hub, an energy hub for the world. I mean, it's just it's uh, wow. It's it's so amazing. Um, lastly, I saw I saw you last night with uh, I think it was last night, Newt Gingrich uh, on yes. Hannity. I thought that was very apropos given uh, a uh, op-ed by Doug Schoen, the Democrat pollster um, that he just published in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, that argued uh, that um, it is indeed time for the Democrats to panic. Uh, all signs are showing uh, that we may be seeing a 1994 midterm all over again. Rich Barris is saying uh, the same thing. He sees a plus, at least a plus four Republican turnout. Others are seeing a plus six Republican turnout. Independents are overwhelmingly breaking Republican because of Biden's imploding numbers. Are you feeling it? Are you seeing that? Are you, you getting a sense that the momentum now is breaking and is behind you at this point, right? We're pushing you at this point. I really do. I have been feeling the momentum. You know, obviously, the media is trying to portray something that is not so. They're you know trying to you know the, the the polls are designed to suppress us. Steve, you remember real clear politics, and I don't know why any network on a Republican side and conservative side uses that because I believe they had me losing right before the primary, Steve, by nine or twelve points. 
I mean, anyone would consider them, you know, a, a serious, but it's designed to suppress the vote. You know, the demo, oh man, that's tough. And we, but we won by 25. So wh where did that, where did that 30 point deficit in real clear come from? Actually, I know they do an average of polls, but that, that shows you that. And Ron DeSantis told me in August and Rebbe, because, you know, the polls are going to be designed to suppress in, in October, November. You got to stay away from. It's hard to stay away from though when you're when you're looking for affirmation. Of course, uh, we watched this time last year. Glenn Yonkin was behind, I think, six or right. seven. I don't yep. know, and there was no way he could win. You know, according to right. you know CBS and NBC and all the regulars at CNN. Um, yeah. So yes, you know, we started off the show here describing the size of the crowds we have. Uh, I'm talking to people that have been in politics in Pennsylvania for. 40, 50 years, they've said they've said they've never seen anything like this, you know, outside of a presidential election, outside of Donald Trump, actually. And so, yes, we had the winds behind us. The Democrats can't help themselves. We had a hearing on parental rights two days ago on the floor of the Senate, I'm sorry, in, in a committee meeting. Um, the mama bears came out and uh, they, they uh, really showed you how far this administration's gone. I mean, it was brutal. Um, the CDC now wants to mandate, of course, a vaccine for your kids where there's no scientific reason to justify that when, when only, you know, 0.00008% of the school age population in Pennsylvania has died from COVID. They want to mandate a vaccine. There's no scientific reason for that. The Democrats just don't know when to stop. Right. Right. Well put. Well, Doug, uh, once again, I can't thank you enough for being with us uh, today. We're all praying for you and rooting you. for you, and we all need to be supporting you. So where can people go to give you a massive boost for the final lap here? Yeah, thank you. So we're looking. We need a... Uh... We're asking for about 20,000 poll watchers. There's 9,000 polling stations. Now, technically, we need only about 9,000. We'd like to have two trained poll watchers in the polling station uh, you know, observing for transparency and accountability. We're pretty close to having all uh, most of the polls covered. That's how Glenn Yonkin pulled it off in Virginia. He had 95% of the polls covered. We still have it. So go to DougForGov.com. Uh, but you have to be a Pennsylvania resident, and you can only work in your county. Uh, Governor Wolf vetoed my bill, which said you could be any county. Uh, number two is... Uh, the people of this nation are keeping our campaign alive and strong by small donations. I mean, to probably around 20 some thousand individuals have donated to our campaign over the past few months. That's a lot of people. Uh, merchandise wise, which we get a small part of that, of course, we're, we're the second highest in merchandise sales in the nation behind Donald Trump. So please go to DougForGov.com and kick in a few bucks if you can. Again, gang, remember, Doug's campaign is not being supported by the Republican Governors Association, again, to their shame. So let's all show our support for Doug by going to DougForGov.com. There's a link down below for you to do just that. And also, as a gift for you, click on the second link below. And for limited time, you can watch our new movie, The Return of the American Patriot, The Rise of Pennsylvania, featuring Doug, uh, absolutely free. And you'll see the amazing journey that Doug's been on over the last year uh, leading up to the landslide primary victory, which is just an anticipation of what we're going to see on November 8th. Governor Mastriano, God's richest blessings on you and Rebby in this final home stretch. You're amazing. Thank you. Onward to victory, brother. Thank you for having me. Amen. You bet.